Hello, hello, I'm Beth Joey and welcome back to my YouTube channel. If you're new here, welcome, welcome. This is the channel where I paint my face, turn my camera on and talk about some books. I am off to the Young Adult Literature Convention or YALC 2022 today. I am so, so, so excited. I have been waiting so, so long for this and I was one of those people who was like, oh, you know, I'm just going to see all the videos people are posting and I'm just gonna like keep track of it online I'm not actually gonna go but then I saw everything that people were posting on Twitter and I got really really major FOMO so now I'm actually going today Ben is coming with me I'm super super excited Alice Oseman is gonna be on a panel today and she's gonna be signing books so naturally I'm bringing Heartstopper with me because can't miss that opportunity but I thought I would quickly do this intro to say hey guys I'm going I'm gonna be bringing you guys along with me so let's go to Yelk So I just got back from Yalk and man, I really did the most today. I bought way more books than I anticipated. I spent way more money than I was supposed to, but at the end of the day, I had an awesome day. I listened into a couple of speeches. I got to listen to Alice Oseman speak, which was absolutely a dream. I'm a little bit annoyed by the fact that I didn't know you were supposed to get tickets to get books signed. So I wasn't able to get my books signed by Alice Oseman, but something for next time if she's there next year. But all in all, it was amaz an amazing day and frankly it was kind of cool because I know I'm not supposed to sneak into Comic-Con uh, because I didn't get a ticket for Comic-Con but Ben and I did sneak in quickly and we did have a little look around that area as well. We did see the massive massive queues that were there for David Harbour and one other guy from Stranger Things, I think his name was Joseph, I can't remember, but we saw the massive, massive cues for those guys um, to see their speeches and it was just amazing that they were there. So anyway, I thought it might be fun to do a little bit of a haul of everything that I got from Yuck today because I I did a lot. I, I, I did a lot, but yeah, we're going to do that. And I'm not going to go through the bio for every single book that I got, maybe just for a couple of my favourites. So we are going to start with this lovely guy here. This is The Jasmine Throne by Tasha Suri. It is an Illumicrate edition. There was an Illumicrate stand, so I got this book from there. I also got Ace of Spades by Farida Abiki Iyamide. I'm so sorry, I'm going to have to look up how to pronounce that, but I got this book from the Illumicrate stand as well. Also from the Illumicrate stand, I got this book pouch thing. Ignore the books that are in it those are library books but I got this book pouch um they were selling them at the beginning of the day but I went up at the end of the day and they said that they didn't have any left that they were selling except for the display one because well there were two display ones and one of them was for sale and the other one wasn't and she said you can have this one it's been displayed so I'll give it to you for free because it's kind of been touched and, and handled by a bunch of people and I was like yeah sure of course I'll take the display one if like if it's gross I'll just wash it so yeah I got the display sort of book pouch thing because I missed the Illumicrate box where they actually sold this. Then I went to the Electric Monkey stand, I think it was, and I got Good Girl, Bad Blood and As Good As Dead by Holly Jackson. These are the second and third book in the A Good Girl's Guide to Murder tr uh, trilogy by this author. I already own the first book and I talked to the person behind the stand and she said if you own the first book you're going to want to immediately pick up the second and third one after finishing that one and I think that was probably like she was going to tell me that even if that's not something I should do um, because she's trying to sell the books obviously but I I don't like not owning a complete series and these were five pounds each it was so so cheap so Technically I saved money, but yeah, so I got these book from the Electric Monkey stand. And because they had a three for 10 deal on, I sort of got those two for 10 quid and then one book for free. And that was The Last Girl by Goldie M Moldowski. This is a horror book. It is sort of a love story to horror movies, I think it's what it's called. It says, when it comes to horror movies, the rules are clear. Avoid abandoned buildings, warehouses and cabins. Stay together, don't split up, not even to check something out. If there's a murderer on the loose, do not make out with anyone. New girl Rachel Chavez turns to horror movies for comfort, preferring them to the rich kids of her fancy New York high school. But then Rachel is recruited by the Mary Shelley Club and its terrifying fear tests. Elaborate pranks inspired by urgent urban legends and horror movies. What starts out as fun soon turns deadly as Rachel's past catches up with her and this is one game that she can't afford to lose. So when they pitched this to me it sounded really really fascinating so I decided to pick it up. Next up I went to the Waterstones stall and this was back when I didn't realise that I had to actually get a ticket to get a book signed by Alice Oseman so I got this book so that it would be signed by her and that was Loveless by Alice Oseman. I've already read this book, I absolutely loved it so I had to get a hard copy of it and I'm a little annoyed that I wasn't able to get it signed but 
hopefully next time. Then I went to another stand, which I can't remember the name of off the top of my head, and I got The Atlas Six by Olivia Blake. This is a book that obviously has been doing the rounds on TikTok, doing the rounds on YouTube. I've been wanting to read it for the longest time, but my library, I'm just way, way, way back in the like waiting list for it, and I frankly just got impatient. So I picked this one up. Um, I would have liked the Waterstones edition because this one doesn't have the sprayed edges, but you know what? I got this one and it's really, really pretty and I'm really excited. This is when I stopped remembering what stands I went to. So I went to another stand and I got the A Curse of Dark and Lonely series by Bridget Kemmerer. I actually went to this stand at the very, very end of the day after Bridget had done her signings and she actually went to this stand and signed every single copy of this series and every single copy of her books that were on it. So all three of these are signed by her and I have to say, I just love like the holographic spines. I think it's such a beautiful book. Um, apparently it's a Beauty and the Beast really retelling, which I absolutely love. It might be a little bit like Sarah J Mass in that way, or at least A Court of Thorns and Roses, but that's fine. So super excited to pick up this series. It sounds like something I'm going to really love. And the last book that I got was Alice's Adventures in Wonderland and Through the Looking Glass by Lewis Carroll. This is sort of like a cloth bound edition. It's got a plastic cover on the front, hence why it's shiny. There were a number of like cloth bound editions of like classic sort of fairy tale or children's books. Um, there was Peter Pan, there was a bunch of others that I can't remember off the top of my head, but this is the one that kind of spoke to me. And this is the one that Ben said as well would be really, really cool to own. So I was like, you know what? That sounds great. I'm going to get it. Um, so yeah, I got this and it is just a beautiful, beautiful edition of this book. I absolutely love it. That is my ring light you can see in the background. So yeah, this is the last book that I got. All in all, had a really, really amazing time at Yalk. I had a lot of fun. I love seeing all the cops, uh, all the costumes from people who attended both Yalk and Comic-Con. There was this really, really amazing Darth Vader, which I think I included a, cl a clip of. There was also a girl who dressed up as a sort of deviant version or a, a version of Loki from a different universe or something. Anyway, she was just really cool. Um, so yeah, that's everything that I got from Yalk. As for my reading update, I am reading Shatter Me by Tahara Marafi at the moment and I'm really, really enjoying it. Um, I annoyingly, the version that I got from my library and the version that I'm listening to on audiobook are two different versions of the book. So the audiobook has extra sentences in it and so Frequently, when I was reading and listening at the same time, I was getting really confused, being like, this isn't written in my copy of the book, and it would be like whole sections. So I decided to put down the library book and just listen to it in audiobook, and I'm really actually enjoying the experience. The audiobook narrator is actually incredible. There are moments in the story where the tension is building and you can feel it in her voice, and she reads it in this sort of fast-paced way that kind of makes it feel like poetry, and it's it's just insane. Um this this particular creator is amazing. I'll link her name down below because I don't know it off the top of my head, but she's really, really good. And she's making the reading experience really, really enjoyable. I went and literally um, downloaded from Scribd all the other books that are uh, narrated by her in this series because I don't want to read the books. I just want to listen to that to that particular narrator reading them. I love in this book how it's sort of taking you through like the nervousness of the character in a really interesting way. Like you hear this like scratch sound half the time when you're reading the audiobook and basically that means that whatever the character has just thought in their head, that sort of introspective monologue or in internal monologue, sorry, that the character's thinking in their, in their head, they're cutting themselves off and crossing things out when they're thinking things that they don't want to think, they don't want to admit which I thought was a really, really interesting, like, creative tool, especially towards the beginning of this book when she's having feelings for this character that she doesn't want to have feelings for and where she's, like, having these conflicting em emotions and thoughts about her parents and how they treated her. And she's like, no, I shouldn't think that. Like, I shouldn't be wondering if they still love me, if they want anything to do with me. So I really, really love that as a creative tool. I think it makes it really... It makes you feel like you're really in her mind and you're really second-guessing things as she is as well. At the point that in the book that I'm at now, the romance romance has sort of started to kick off and it feels kind of insta-lovey which is weird to say because I know these two characters have known each other for a really really long time I think that since they were in the third grade or something like that but in terms of the experience that we've had with the characters or that I as a reader have had with the characters there hasn't been a lot of time for them to build this relationship and already they're very very intensely in love with each other and risking everything for each other so I thought that was kind of weird I also think it's kind of weird how, you know, she has this power that, you know, the rule is she can't touch anyone because she will inflict insane amounts of pain and agony on them. 
But then there are these two guys that are the exception to that rule. And I think it's, I, I don't know, I don't know how I feel about there being two people that are the exception to that rule. Like one, I can understand there's usually some reason behind that, but two feels a little too convenient, especially because these two people are very, very like pivotal people in her life. But yeah, the book is really interesting. I'm loving the internal monologue that we get to go through with the main character. I'm loving the romance. It's really, really sweet. I'm loving that we're seeing more of um, the sort of main male leads family and his experience. We're learning more about his life before the sort of army military style position he was put in and and why he sort of went down that path so that we can understand you know one why he's against that that sort of system of government and that system of power at the same time as understanding why he actually joined it to begin with so that's really really interesting there's definitely a lot of tension at the moment because they've escaped but there is something that's kind of threatening that escape and that freedom. And I only have like an hour left of the audiobook and I'm kind of trying to resist the urge to immediately jump into the next one and just smash out this series because I don't want to do that because I want to smash through my TBR because I already know I'm in a book hangover this month, which means that I'm barely going to get through my TBR, I reckon, but I don't want to pick up any more punishments for the next month because I'm going to Australia. And the last thing I need is to try and deal with like my trip to Australia and an increased TBR at the same time. It would just be too much but anyway my camera's running out of battery I need to shut up this clip is way too long I love Yalk I'm loving Shatter Me by Tahara Murphy it is all around a good time and I'm having an amazing weekend so I will see you guys in my next update which will probably be on Monday <laughs>
turn into the exact opposite with a dystopia and how a world f that's fallen apart can really rebuild itself in really bad ways. So I love dystopian novels, I love reading about the weird and wonderful rules that they come up with and the, the things that come out of them in terms of characters, so yeah I'm super excited to get, get into the rest of this series. But as for what I read next, I read Red Platoon by Clinton Romache, which is a true story based on a battle that was fought in Afghanistan I believe it was. Yes, the battle was fought in Afghanistan at a place called Combat Outpost Keating. So in terms of what the book is about, I'm just going to read you the blurb because as always, I'm always really, really careful with um, books that are based on a true story in, you know, telling that story correctly. And I don't want to get any facts wrong when I tell you what the book is about because that's people's lives that I'm talking about. So I'll read you the blurb and it says, Isolated. Combat Outpost Keating, one of the most vulnerable US Army bases in Afghanistan, located at the bottom of a deep valley. Soldiers are exposed. The enemy can see every move and attack is always imminent. Outnumbered. Just before sunrise on the 3rd of October 2009, hundreds of Taliban insurgents open fire from all angles. Red, Plat Red Platoon and the Black Knight troop are pinned down. They hear the message over the radio, enemy in the wire. The Taliban are inside the camp, but never outgunned. This is the heart-stopping, awe-inspiring true story of the platoon's brutal struggle for survival told by the men told by the man who fought to defend his men and who was awarded the Medal of Honor for his extraordinary bravery. And this book, five stars, was just chills all over, especially at the end of the book. I was walking home when I was reading the last sort of chapter, the epilogue, and then the notes to editors, uh, or notes to the reader, or what, what, I can't remember what it was called, I think it's notes to the reader, at the end of the book, and then the in memoriam page where he listed the names and the position of every person that died in this battle, and I was tearing up um, because the whole story had moved me so much and the way it was written and the beauty but the gruesomeness of the way it was written and the and the bluntness at times as well was it, it just it hit me so so hard and you know sometimes I struggle through nonfiction books because I can I can really struggle with keeping going because there are always lulls and you know people's lives are definitely always interesting but you know sometimes there's just lulls in the books but this one there was there was no lull there was no moment where I tuned out there was no moment where I wasn't absolutely hooked like I finished this book I think in two days and I was listening to it constantly like whenever I got a chance when I was on my lunch break when I was on my way to work when I was on my way home from work when I was like at home Ben would be like hey you want to watch a show tonight I'm like no I have to read this book there's so much in this book that is just hooking me in I cannot I'll put this down and it was just it was beautiful the book itself was indescribably mesmerizing and everything that happened in the book I would constantly have to pinch myself and remind myself that this isn't a work of fiction it's true because there were so many moments that just felt completely like unbelievable like the what these men went through and the decisions that came about both like before all of this happened that you know the decisions that resulted in this happening and and the decisions that were made throughout the battle just felt completely unbelievable um so you had to re i had to remind myself constantly this was a true story all of this happened like and and at the very very end clint romache the the author makes a note that and he says you know everything that i'm telling you everything from you know what the characters are saying to each other to how i'm describing things this is all true based on what he remembers and the memories of the people that he spoke to everything is word for word the truth uh, based on their memories and I think that is absolutely incredible one that he was able to remember that much but two it lended this authenticity and this beauty and this bluntness and this sort of personal nature to everything that I was reading that it just it reeled me in the other thing that absolutely reeled me into this book and I've opened the page uh, for an example is that they put pictures throughout this book of both the soldiers that were fighting that day and then also just the area that they were in, what it looked like, what they were facing in terms of the terrain and how much of a disadvantage they were at in terms of the terrain. So these are pictures of two of the men that um, both fought uh, at Combat Outpost Keating on that day and there are three pictures on this page that just shows the absolute hell of the terrain and the disadvantage they were at in terms of where they they were stationed and where this where this outpost was so it's in that way it really thrusts you into the book because you can imagine everything that's around them and you can see it for yourself as well and then they have this map on the very sort of front section of the book as well so you can really just track the movements of these soldiers and the way this story is told in terms of their movements is very methodical it's very much 
like you can tell this was written by someone who's in the army who's grown up in an army family because they tell the story and the movements and the machine um the machinery and the weapons and everything in such a methodical you know precise manner the writing was both beautiful and gruesome in the way that you can tell that an immense immense amount of care um, and consideration went into making sure this story was accurate and you know sensitive to the men that were there that day but also brutally honest in the portrayal of the events that happened and you can tell that of utmost importance to this author was telling the bravery of these men in such a respectful way and you could feel that in every sentence. I mean for me Red Platoon is is unputdownable. It's it from the background context that was given to the whole situation that explained how they got to the point they were at and who each of the soldiers were and what their lives were like, how the group formed the bond that they did, all the way through to the high stakes intensity of this battle that lasted like 200 almost 300 pages and then the use of images as well which really placed you in that camp like you didn't have to imagine it you could see it based on those pictures and I kept referring back to the pictures and the maps when I was reading this book because I wanted to see it I wanted to feel it I wanted to experience it as much as I could um, through this story but anyway I'm going on um, way too much I am rambling I I love this book if I had have read this earlier in the year it probably would have been best book of the year and frankly it's right up there like I'm sorry Invisible Life of Annie LaRue this this beats that in a completely different turn of events now is the book that i'm reading at the moment which is the lucky list by rachel lippincott this one i picked up because i believe there was a book that was dual authored by rachel lippincott and another author who i can't remember the name of and it was at yalk and i was kind of like you know what i'm gonna read some of this author's work so i picked this up from the library and yeah i'm i'm really enjoying it so far i'm only about 50 pages in so i don't really know what it's about so i will read you the blurb and it says emily's always been lucky well technically her mum was the lucky one and since she died emily started to feel like her luck's run out so when emily finds her mum's senior year bucket list she finds 12 ways to feel close to her again but if she wants to check everything off she'll need help help in the form of blake as blake and emily work through the list the girl's bond deepens Emily is starting to feel lucky again, but she's faced with the question, can she accept this new part of herself, the part her mum never even knew existed? So it's the story of loss and heartbreak, but then finding love in unexpected places, in unexpected ways. It's a sapphic romance. I am beyond in love with the blurb and I'm enjoying the book so far. It's, it's sort of just started to get into things where, um, Emily has found the list so I'm excited to kind of see what she does with that and you can tell that she's got sort of a strange relationship with her dad because her dad's trying to sort of move on or being forced to move on after the the death of her mother and Emily's not ready um so I'm excited to see that sort of character development throughout this book of Emily coming to terms with the fact that you know her her mother is gone and she needs to um not accept that because I mean you can never accept that that sounds like a horrific thing to, tr to have to deal with and I'm, and I'm so lucky I haven't experienced it myself but you know she she needs to build her life back up again um, and I'm excited to see how she does that uh, so yeah I'm reading this at the moment really enjoying it uh, this will probably be the last book of this vlog because I do need to get started on another vlog which I am filming sort of over the weekend towards the end of the week and that is where I read the Bellinger sisters books so do keep an eye out for that one um, and I'll also link up above and down below um, the video where I talk about my favorite book of the year so far which is Invisible Life of Addie LaRue uh, because it's an amazing book even though it's potentially been beaten out by Red Platoon. So yeah, I will see you guys in my next update whenever that is knowing me. It'll be like mid next week. Hey guys, it is Saturday. We are coming back around. We've made it full circle. It has been a week since I started this vlog uh, but I have not been vlogging much and to be honest I haven't even really been reading much at the moment but I just wanted to come back in check in and say last night I finished reading The Lucky List by Rachel Lippincott and I gave this book three stars um I did enjoy it but yeah there was just a few bits and bobs about it that weren't um my favorite so as for my general sort of thoughts on this it was really really enjoyable but I think it was more contemporary than romance at a time when I really really wanted an easy breezy lovely romance the romance really kind of came on came into this book only in the last maybe 100 or even 75 50 pages or so I think the message in this book of finding your passion and not living your life by others expectations and being true to who you are and all of that sort of thing was really really beautiful really 
really well delivered and very very clear while also not being like literally spelled out to you it was very very easy to see that Rachel Lippincott like that's what she was trying to tell her her readers like you know make make with her character making her connection with her mother but then also realizing that her mother just wanted her to be happy rather than living her life the way that it left off when um when her mother passed away and then the friendship that was built between Blake and Emily was just really beautiful and raw and and perfect because they were they were literally exactly what each other needed at that point of time um, and I thought that the way that they supported each other was really really lovely though there was one thing that I kind of didn't like about their friendship was that you know Emily's mother had obviously passed away and that was what a lot of this book was about about making that connection with her mother but then Blake's mother had also passed away but I don't think that was really used as a way for the girls to like make the connection and I don't think that was really like a moment in and of itself in the book it was just it kind of just felt like a tool to be like oh yeah look we have something in common like it didn't really feel like you know something that was really delved into it was just kind of convenient. I think the main reason though why I gave this three stars is because I really struggled to pick it up every time I found that I had time to read. I just, there was something about it that didn't hook me in, that didn't keep me wanting to come back for more and when that happens it's usually because it's a character driven book and I, I will say this is predominantly character driven is a lot of character development not a ton of plot that's like leading you through the main sort of plot point is that they're trying to fill this um they're trying to complete this bucket list of, of items for summer so I think that's part of why I didn't keep coming back to it because I wasn't super super attached to the characters and it was a character driven book but I think it was also because there are quite a few things that happen in the story that I found really really predictable like there was this one twist at the end which I'm not going to tell you the full details of but I think if you were to read this book you would figure out very quickly what that twist is going to be because I knew from the get-go the minute they pulled out that list and they read the list that that's how that was going to go that's how that sort of story was going to go and unfortunately the whole message of being true to yourself and not living your life by others expectations was kind of destroyed by that twist at the end I did like that there was one thing on the list that that Emily either didn't feel that she could complete or she thought she was going to go her own way and she could have her own sort of path drawn out so that she didn't feel like she was just living her life by what her mum expected of her. Whereas when that twist happened, it was kind of like, she's going on this own pathway. Oh, wait, this is what was on the list all along. Um, so that's just kind of how it is. And I was kind of like, oh, OK, well, she doesn't have her own thing. Then she's just doing what her mum expected of her still. But yeah, anyway, that's not to say that I didn't like this book. I really did like it. I loved the message. I thought it was beautifully written. I did like the characters. I thought it was a really sweet sort of high school um, Sapphic Romance character development, finding yourself kind of book. I did enjoy it. Um, there were just those couple of things that I couldn't get past. But anyway, that's my thoughts on the lucky list. As for what I'm doing now, I'm kind of debating at the moment whether I keep this vlog going and continue reading what my next book is going to be and continue updating you guys and, and taking you to a festival that I'm going to today called Wing Fest, which just literally celebrates chicken wings, which I'm so, so excited for because I love, love chicken wings. It's like my whole thing but I don't know if I'm going to like stop this vlog here and and do that like in a new vlog or if I should take you with me I don't know you know what let's just keep going let's keep going let's tell you about the book that I'm reading next which is Queen of Shadows by Sarah J Maas if you remember like a few videos ago I think during Realmathon I'll link up above and down below if I can find the video where I talk about it I'm kind of doing a project at the moment where I reread every book written by Sarah J Maas in publication order. So the reason why I'm kind of doing this is because I found that I was reading like bits and pieces of her series and like really enjoying them. Like I've read the entirety of Court of Thorns and Roses. I've read the entirety of the sort of House of Earth and Blood like Crescent City series or at least what's out at the moment. And then I hadn't finished the Throne of Glass series because I DNF'd it, I think after this book, because um, I just wasn't attached to it. But I decided, you know what? Everything is kind of coming together in those books and there's a lot of um, sort of hints and theories about how all of those books are going to come together in some way. So I was like, you know what, if I want to enjoy that when it happens, then I need to have the background and I need to have the basis to build off of. So that's why I am reading all of her books again. And then as for in publication order, I just think sometimes that's the best way to experience um, an author's works. You get to see how they've sort of grown and developed and changed over time, how their writing style has changed. You get to experience their writing and their works in the same way that the people who 
were buying these books every time they came out got to experience them so I decided I wanted to do the same thing I think publication order is always the best way to read a series because you really get to learn a lot more about like the author and the experience that way but anyway this is the next book in that project so Queen of Shadows is the fourth I want to say yeah fourth book in the Throne of Glass series starting with Throne of Glass which follows Selena Sardothian who is an assassin in Aurelia I think is where she lives I don't know I might be getting all the different places and worlds confused because I'm reading them all jumbled up but anyway at the start of the first book Selena Sardothian is in a prison camp called Endovia um, as a result of her work as an assassin she was captured uh, I think a year prior and put into Endovia and then one day um, the head of the guard or the captain of the guard Kale and the prince Prince Dorian come to the prison camp and give her the opportunity of a lifetime to get out of the prison camp and potentially earn her way to freedom by becoming the king's champion but first she has to compete in a competition alongside a number number of other like ruffians and assassins and you know fairly horrible people um to prove that she is the best so she returns to the castle gets involved in lies and scandals and a rebel plot line and then as well as all of that all of her competitors start dying in really mysterious and gruesome ways so Selena not only has to find a way to stay alive she also has to keep her whole life and this sort of hidden secret that you don't really find out about until later on in the series she has to keep her whole life secret so yeah I'm really really enjoying the series so far but unfortunately I think this is the point in which I sort of separated myself and was like I'm not actually enjoying this anymore so hopefully I will finish this book and actually be ready to move on because I don't want the rest of this series, which gets longer and longer and longer, to feel like a slog just so that I can finish this project. Because uh, I know like the last book is probably, I think, in the thousand of like it's a thousand pages or it's it's close to that. And I really don't want to read that and be so bored by it. So um yeah, let's hope this is good. At the moment, I am about 34 pages into the book, so I don't really have any thoughts other than uh, there's a moment that I'm really, really looking forward to happening that I forgot happened in this book, uh, where Selena gets to reunite with someone who is very important to her. So I'm excited to see that happen. And I remember there being like a lot of missed opportunities before that actually happened. So when it does, I'm, ah, uh, I remember being like really, really excited and it was really, really cool the way that they, oh, I got something in my eye. Okay, it's gone. It was really, really cool the way that it happened. I remember like having massive goosebumps. goosebumps. God, I can't speak today. But anyway, I'm going to keep reading that book. I'm going to get dressed and ready for Wingfest today and take you along with me while I eat chicken wings really disgustingly because there is no nice way to eat finger food like that. So um, yeah, I'll take you guys along with me and I'll give you my next update on this book when I've actually read a little bit more. I'm reading the audiobook and the physical book at the same time because I feel like sometimes with those bigger fantasy world stories, that's the only way I'm able to get through the content at any sort of decent speed. Otherwise, it would literally take me two weeks to read that book. Um, but yeah, that's what I'm doing. So I'm going to stop rambling, I'm going to stop talking, and I'm going to let you go and get on with my day. So I have just gotten home from Wingfest, which was super, super fun. I included some clips just before this update, um, filming some of the stuff that happened at Wingfest. It was, it was honestly amazing. I tried so, so many good foods, so many good wings. There were some ice cream places there. There was some really good drinks and stuff, like some slushies. It was amazing. It was a really, really hot summer day in, in London. It's like getting to the like late... 20s I think in terms of heat so there was like this carnival ride there where you could like spin around and around in circles which is super fun so many slushies were had ice po icy poles ice cream everything as well as amazing amazing wings so I had an amazing time um, but I realized while I was out that I actually want this video to go up tomorrow and there is absolutely no way that I'm going to finish this hunker of a book Queen of Shadows 
by the end of tonight so that I can edit and upload this ready for tomorrow. So I'm going to wrap up my vlog here, just saying that I had an amazing time at Wingfest. I've had fun this past week reading all the books that I've mentioned, you know, Red Platoon, The Lucky List, Bit of Queen of Shadows, um, there was probably one other, but I can't remember. Um, I've had a really fun week, it's been good, um, but yeah, so I'm going to wrap up this vlog here. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know down below what you have been reading at the moment, if you're loving it, if you're hating it, all that sort of stuff. I love to chat to you guys in the comments down below, and I do my best to reply to every single comment. I really, really hope that you liked this video, and if you did, please do let me know by liking, subscribing, hitting that notification button. It is a super easy way to support my channel and help it grow, and I will see you lovely people in my next video. Bye!